as we prepare to worship the Lord this morning. I've hoped that you've had a great week and that you, you're set to have a great weekend as we remember in uh, memorial those who have uh, fought for our freedom. And I uh, just want to throw this out there. I want you to know that uh, freedom has always been bought by the blood of man. Even the freedom of our, from our sins are, it was bought by the blood of Jesus. And the freedom that we experience and that we enjoy in this, in this uh, country today was bought because men were willing to stand and fight for what was right. So I, I thank you for that, uh, the, for this opportunity to be able to, uh, to uh, worship the Lord and, um, and to honor them that had uh, fought on our behalf. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to have the pledges of, uh, of, of the allegiances uh, to the Bible, to the Christian flag, and to the United States, the flag of the United States of America. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you so much for your good grace and mercy. And Lord, we love you so much and ask, Lord, that you'll help us uh, as we present uh, your gospel. And Lord, as we sing praises to you. Lord, uh, this morning has had some difficulties already, and we pray that you would overshadow and that you would oversee everything that takes place. Now, Lord, we love you once again. Ask, Lord, that you would bless and have your will in our service. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to start with the pledge of the Bible. It says, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all that believe. I pledge allegiance to the the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen.
Aren't you grateful for that song? The sings of those who are willing to, to pay the price and who we trust in. Amen. Now, just a few announcements. Please remember to pray for Jacob and his family at the death of his, uh, his uh, brother. Um, uh, also, uh, pray that the truth will come out with all the evidence of the, of the, that, that's out there that, that needs to be brought forth. Uh, that uh, they can get to the bottom of, uh, of just exactly how he died. Uh, so please remember to pray for those things. I was asked to give an update on Amanda. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Amanda's doing doing somewhat uh, well. She she still itches that something that she's going to to have until she actually gets a transplant. We are in the process of going through the motions of getting a transplant, and it is, it's a long process. It's not something that's going to happen next week, probably not next month. Uh, hopefully soon, though. Uh, it has to go through the insurance company. Then we have to start, uh, they have to evaluate her, and then they have to figure out just exactly where she is to be put on the list. And all that takes a lot of time, and uh, through all that we're, we're going through right now with the COVID-19, it is uh, it's slow. And uh, so what, what I'd ask that, that you'd pray that, uh, that Amanda would uh, uh, not get discouraged, and uh, that uh, because right now her life is on hold and, uh, and it's hard. So please be in prayer for her. To, that God would send her encouragement and would help her to be able to um, to see his will through all this. Amen. That is that that is the, the most important thing. Um, also, continue to pray for uh, Austin Gardner. He was hospitalized uh, with pneumonia, and uh, they did the test uh, for COVID-19. I don't know what it's come back or if it's come back yet, but I do know he was on the ventilator. And uh, the last I heard, they had turned it down to where it, it was at 50% capacity, and they were hoping to turn it down to 40 to even start, start weaning them off of that. So please be in prayer. Uh, there's millions and millions of people that are praying for him. And um, uh, we're looking for God to do some great things through that. Amen. So let's continue to pray for, for, for that. Pray for our, our country and our nation. Uh, pray for our, our, our new lifestyle, you could even say, that's come about, that, uh, that we'll get to a place of some normality. Amen. Uh, there's, uh, it's just it's crazy out there and, uh, and some of the things that are, are happening in our society and the news that we're, that we're seeing on both ends. And it's just uh, it's, uh, confusion. And uh, we know who the author of confusion is. It's the devil. And uh, all this is, uh, is, is um, you know, to, to bring us to a place where our, our, our faith is sidetracked. And uh, we're, we need to be strong. And uh, I'm grateful for our president who stood and declared that church is a necessity. And uh, what a blessing that was to hear him say that. I wish, I really wish that two months ago he would have said that. But I'm grateful that we, that, that there's somebody that's in authority that will stand and say the things that need to be said. And I'm so grateful for that. So continue to pray for him because he is definitely being bombarded with, uh, because of that. And uh, there's a fight ahead uh, in his court because of that too. Uh, uh, there's uh, there's a lot of hostility towards some churches that haven't uh, haven't quit meeting because of all of this, and uh, even churches have been burnt down because of it. So please be in prayer that uh, that 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 through it all, that God would get the glory of everything that takes place and give us as people of God wisdom. Amen. So let's remember to pray for those. Uh, we've got the lights up in the church. They're on. Everything's working great. And we are so excited. You're going to be able to come in here. And there's not 
literally there is not one place that is darker than the other it is completely lit you'll be able to see anywhere you sit and uh, i'm i'm just praising the lord for how how he's allowed us to be able to do it and the time period that he allowed us to be able to do it in amen uh, so continue to pray that um uh, we're we're planning on on having our first service uh, the seventh of June, and um, and we'll be sending out uh, Daniel's uh, writing up uh, a list of stuff that we talked about uh, discussing with the deacons, uh, the the things that uh, we we need to implement and suggestions, and uh, we'll be sending those out this week, and uh, so look for that in your email. And, and then we'll prepare for that day to have a good day in the Lord. Amen. And hope to see uh, you back. If, but I want you to know, if you feel uncomfortable in any way of coming back, uh, don't think that there's anybody ever going to look down or think, think any less of you or anything. I, I want you to be comfortable uh, about coming back when you're ready. And uh, we'll, we're will we going to continue streaming and we'll continue the services. So, uh, you know, you, as you feel comfortable, I, I want you to be uh, at ease to think that, you know, I'm not pressured to come to church. Church is, this is voluntary. We are worshiping the Lord. We're worshiping the Lord today together, maybe not, uh, maybe not in, collectively and such, but, but I hope that you're there with your family. And I hope that if you're, if you're single, that maybe that, uh, you know, it's okay to get uh, some of your close friends together uh, that, may, that may feel comfortable being around. And, and worship and, and, and watch the preaching or, or, uh, and have discussion over it afterwards. So there's, there's, a, there's, there's a great ministry that has taken place during this time that's reached a lot of people and are reaching a lot of people. So let's praise the Lord for what God has done through this and, um, and be excited what God's going to do when he brings us back. Amen. So continue to pray for those things as, uh, as we're marching towards that place of being able to, to get back to church and, and pray for, our, our, uh, for Georgia as we're opening up more and, and that, that we'll see uh, God's blessing upon it and, and, and see less cases until it, it just gets to the place that that there is there is very few amen so let's uh let's pray to that in now before the message we have the beaches going to be singing draw me near Let's 
a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Call me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross Draw me near. Aren't you grateful that, that we can draw near to the Lord? I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We were going to have a missionary, uh, Nathan uh, Saunders. He, he was going to be with us this morning. And he called at the, and, um, and canceled uh, and uh, wasn't able to make it. So please be in prayer for him and his family as they'll be going uh, our, our own deputation and looking forward to uh, getting back. Uh, maybe we'll have him later on this year, but uh, continue to pray for them as, uh, as they are uh, out on deputation. Now, John chapter number 14, uh, I, I, I want to look at the very first six verses, and um, I want us to think about... Uh, what Jesus is telling his disciples. I want you to see the place that we're at. This is the, this is the last uh, day. There, the Passover feast is taking place. And uh, Jesus is, is told them and, and that, that he was going or going away and he's been telling them that uh, you know he's going to the cross and he's he's been pointing towards that direction all through John all through John he he makes mention here and there of of uh his suffering and through the gospels you see it but we come down to the to the those last few hours or that are taking place if you read your Bible, you'll find in chapter number 13 that uh, the disciples are sitting there and they're, they're wondering who's going to be the greatest. And uh, their mind is set on being second in command. And Jesus, he girts himself and does that by which none of the others even offer to do one for the other. And humbles himself before them and washes their feet. And then at the end of chapter number 13 there, Peter, he, Jesus tells them that what's going to take place and how they're going to fall away. And Peter says, Not, we're going, we, I will die for you. And Jesus turns to him and says, before it's over, you'll deny me three times. Then we come to verse number 14. With that in mind, with the sorrow of their heart, in this heavy time, Jesus says to them, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have, not, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I, I go, ye know. And the way ye know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether, whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your good grace and mercy. Lord, I need your help this morning. I ask, Lord, that you would open up your word. And, Lord, that you would help us to see truth, and Lord, to find encouragement in a troubled time that we're living in. And Lord, I pray that you'd make these words as fresh today as they were when you said them. I humble myself before you realizing I'm just a man in need of you. Bless, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We see that here that the disciples had a troubled heart. You know what causes trouble? Fear. Loss of focus. Or lack of faith. These things cause us to have troubled heart. Jesus sweetly pleads to his disciples, trust me. He says, you believed in God, believe also in me. Trust me. Believe what I say, for my words are true. He has been described as the all-powerful, the creator of all things. He said that he come to do the Father's will to fulfill the plan of God. To fulfill that plan, to reveal the purpose of to see man saved. He describes a triumphant return to come and get us. But the focus here is on that troubled heart. On the troubled heart that man has. You know, there's many different things in life that troubles us. And for sure, our world has been shaken by a disease <laughs> that has troubled the hearts of many. And even today troubled their hearts. To do and to, to withstand and to even lock ourselves up into our own houses because of a troubled heart. I believe if Jesus was here today, he would tell us the same as he told his disciples that day. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. We are living in a time that when our, we say we believe and trust in God, but yet our belief and trust is really in the medical field, the government, our bank account, and our own ability. And yet... Jesus tells us that the only cure for a troubled heart is for us to believe in him. I believe that's one of the scripture shows so oftenly tells us that, that we're to trust him, we're to believe in him, we're to put our faith in him, we're to put our, our care in him. Because that is the only deliverance. He describes in this passage of scriptures that we've read several things that, that help a troubled heart. Number one is that our Father has a mansion where he is preparing a place for us. You know, heaven is a, it, it, the hope of heaven is a cure for a troubled heart. If we know what our destiny is and we know where we're going, 
Why are we worried? If heaven is as splendor as we say and we preach, then why is death so tragic in our eyes? If it's being close to the Lord and being near Him, shouldn't we be as we've been going over in the book of John, in the book of uh, 1 Peter, willing to lay our lives down for one another? He's preparing a place for us. You know, that, that is just what our Lord did the whole time he was here on earth. He was preparing for us. He prepared redemption through the cross of Calvary. He gave us the, that victory over sin. He was preparing a victorious life for us by raising from the dead. The grave, the tomb is empty. He is preparing a place for us to go to as his ascension in, when, as he went into heaven. His return should be a a event that our hearts are continually looking forward to. We talked about in 1 Peter chapter number 1 how the hope of his return should be that by what brings our life together so it, it sort of tightens it together so we have a, a, a steadfast focus. He said in John, in, in, in John 14, 3, I will come again. It's a promise. He has promised us that he will come again. As we are here on earth. We are so wonderfully given such great encouragement in this. In John chapter number, in, in verse number 2 of four, uh, John chapter 14. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. You know, there's been such a struggle over that word mansion. But I want to say this right here. Would there be anything else but a mansion in a palace? I mean, each room in itself would have to be something so splendor. And he said that, that there is that that's waiting for us. And the Bible tells us that... that when we see him, the, the affairs and the cares of this life will vanish away. It is going to be such an awesome time when we see him. Troubles are not going to be something that we're going to focus on. Heartaches are not going to be something that we're going to be concerned with. His Father's house. That place where we'll dwell forever. He says this also in, that, in, in, in those verses. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. Coming to the place where we trust what Jesus says. I mean, really trust it. Not just, not just say, I know that it's true, but to, to really trust something. Really trusting something is not just saying it with my mouth that it's true. But it's living my life with the understanding of this truth. That this truth becomes a part of the way that I live. Why shouldn't we get anxious? Why should we not be troubled hearted? Because Jesus said that he was coming again for us. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Aren't you grateful? He, he, he is right now preparing a place for you. Do you know that because he is there, the Bible says that we're able to enter into the throne room of God. We're able to, to, to enter in with prayers and thanksgiving. 
We have such a close relationship that, that because of his ascension and because of him being there, he has prepared a place for us to have a meeting with God on a daily basis. That's awesome. I, I, I don't believe it's just preparing a, a place for us to stay. He has prepared for us even now things that we can experience with God. We can have that sweet fellowship. And we have to know that this be true. We have to trust in his word. He said, he said you believe in God, believe also in me. The wrestling of the time period of, of the gospel was not that if God's word was true, but it was, is Jesus' word the same as God? Today we wrestle with the same truth. Is Jesus Word equal with God? If his word has demanded us to have let not our hearts be troubled and to believe in him, should that not be what we do? He has prepared all things for us. Before all this took place in the world, I I, I was looking forward to the coming of Christ. I was, I, I, I preached on it. I, I thought about it. I would wake up and, and say, I hope you come today, Lord. But can I tell you, as I see the things that are coming into our world and the things that are taking place, I can nothing more than believe that we are stepping closer to the day of the Lord. To the day of the Lord. That this event actually could be in our near future. I've always believed it. but I, I, I want you to know it's becoming a more real concept to me than it's ever been before. And more than ever now, that every morning when I wake up, I say, Lord, could you please come today? Could today be that day that you come to receive me? But I want you to see something here because he brings that, that wonderful encouragement that his word is true, that there's a place being prepared for us, that he's coming again to us. He brings it to a, a climax, if you would, with stipulation. He says to his disciples, He says in verse number four, he says, and whether I go, you know, and the way you know. His disciples that were sitting in that very room, Thomas said, Lord, how do we know? Well, we don't know what way you're going. He said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. They, they still could not grasp the understanding of what he was saying. He spells it out clear. He, he gives them that only way. And I want you to know this is the only way. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. That's the only door. That's the only entrance point. That is the narrow gate, if you would, that we preached about. It's not broad. There's only one way to enter in. It's not, listen to me, it is not a, uh, 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 you, so you're stuttering, Brother David. I am. The, the reason being is because the, the, the word came to me in Spanish, and I was about to say it and, and instead of English. And I'm trying to figure out what the word is in English. It, it, it's not being helped. By any other. You say, what do you mean, Brother David? Well, <laughs> there's nobody that can get you through that door but Jesus. There's no church. There's, there's no authority. There's no family. 
There's, there's no saint of God. It's only Him. He is that door. The pathway to that door is the gospel being preached. And every ear to hear. It's not a prayer that we pray to some saint or, or, or a belief that we believe in an institution or a religion. <laughs> he said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Listen to the negative part of this. He said, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no other. There's no other way but through him. What encouragement. He has said, Do you have a troubled heart? Are you concerned and overtaken by the concerns of this world? Listen. He has encouraged us to believe in Him. That He is true. That He has the power and the ability to say what He has promised to come to pass. That he is going away to prepare for us. And he is coming again to get us. If that be so. What are we troubled for? He says. If you know that I'm the way. The truth and the life. We will have access to the father. Salvation. Salvation. What a wonderful, wonderful verse. I hope today that you're trusting in Jesus. I hope today that, that, that the things that are going on around you haven't got you in such a, a, a frizzy that you've lost faith in who is the Creator. I believe that Jesus wrote and allowed this to be in the word of God for such a time as this. That we can find encouragement that he is our comfort. Our comfort in life and our comfort in death. Do you know him today? Do you know him as the way the truth? Has he become your life? I hope so. Let's pray. Father, I love you and thank you for your good grace and mercy. And Lord, I pray God that you'll help us. Lord, that you would help us to be focused on what we need to be focused on. When our vision is sidetracked, when, when we get to a, uh, the things of the world that become so important to us and so in front of us that our eyes get off of you, our heart becomes troubled. Lord, I pray, God, that you would bring us back to where we need to be. Realign our focus in our hearts towards you. Lord, if there be one here that's listening, Lord, that may not know you as Savior, or may have trusted in something else besides you and you alone, I pray today would be the day that they find that door that you are, the only door, by which you've commanded that all that come to the Father must go in. Lord, I pray that you would touch, to minister their hearts. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Beachams are going to be singing for us. America the Beautiful. spacious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountain majesties 
that you have a great day. I want to invite you to come back tonight as we'll be studying in the book of John. We'll start chapter number 10. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's full of, of good stuff. I don't want to get it all the way, but we're, we'll be looking at the good shepherd. Amen. So let's, uh, let's uh, be back at, at, uh, at 6, and I hope that you have a blessed day. <laughs>